Well, hello again. Uh, let's fix our eyes on Jesus uh, as we get stuck into God's Word, looking at Paul's letter to the Galatians. So let's pray and seek God's help as we do that. Lord God, thank you for today. Thank you for your grace and mercy to us in Jesus. Thank you for the good news of the risen Lord. Lord, as we seek to understand that good news and see how it uh, should impact our lives and shape our lives, may your spirit guide us in that, particularly as we come to your word right now. Help us uh, and give us understanding and lead us into truth. For your glory we pray. Amen. Okay, so continuing on in Galatians uh, chapter 1, uh, verses 6 to 9. Uh, the words are there for you to follow. Uh, and so, you know, this is still the, the start of the letter. Uh, and Paul is establishing uh, what, what, what the reason is for him writing this letter to the churches in Galatia. Um, and he, he, he cuts right to the chase. Um, it's quite distinct from uh, Paul's other letters. Uh, Paul's other letters, after his introduction, he normally talks about how things are going for that church and, and how he prays for that church and how he's heard about the faith of that church and all that sort of stuff. But when it comes to this letter, Paul wastes no time getting to the issue. And the reason for that is, is because of how important, important Paul uh, understands the issue at hand to be, because it's all about the gospel. And so he starts off that I am astonished that you are quickly deserting him who called you in the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel. Right? Just notice the language Paul used there. Because even in that verse, he's, he's grounding uh, his words in the truth of what the gospel actually is. The Galatians are deserting the one who called them. Right? God takes the initiative. Right? It's not that we come to God and because we've come to the party, then God meets us halfway. No, no, no. God called them. It's all by his grace, the grace that he showed us, the, the love and the mercy that we didn't deserve, but that he showed us anyway. And what does Paul say? He says, these Galatians, they're deserting him. Notice what he says there. It's not that they're deserting the gospel, that by turning to a different gospel, they're deserting Jesus. That's crucial to understand. Because, Paul, you know, this is the most important thing for the church to understand, is the truth of the gospel. But the Galatians are turning to a different gospel. Um, and this is uh, one of the biggest threats uh, to the church, both in Paul's day and in our day. Uh, false teachers who come in and preach a false gospel, a different gospel. Right? And the New Testament letters make this abundantly clear. You read uh, through the New Testament and you will see just how much uh, Paul or even Peter or John in all their letters address this issue. Um, you know, Time and time again, the churches are warned uh, to protect the truth in effect to ground themselves in the Word of God and in the Gospel so that when, when the, the, um, the fakers come, if you like, when the, when the false teachers uh, come on the scene, they'll be able to uh, see them for what they are. Uh, and Jesus himself warned about this. Uh, in Matthew chapter 7, verse 15, he talks about how there will be wolves in sheep's clothing, how there'll be many on the last day who thought that they were doing the Lord's work, but in an actual fact that they weren't doing the Lord's work at all. And what will Jesus say to them? He says, he'll say, away from me, I never knew you. And so these false teachers have come in, it seems, into the Galatian churches, and they're uh, causing the people there to turn to a different gospel. And what does Paul say? He goes on to say, not, not that there is another gospel, not that there is another one, verse 7 this is, but there are some who trouble you and want to distort the gospel of Christ. Uh, you know, this is the danger. When you distort the gospel, when you perhaps change a little bit of it, when you take something away or leave something out or you add something to it, you don't have the gospel. 
And Paul underscores just how serious an issue this is in what is perhaps uh, some of the strongest language uh, he uses in all of his letters. In verse 8, if we or an angel uh, from heaven should preach to you a gospel contrary to the one we preach to you, let him be accursed. Uh, The language there is, you know, if we are an angel from heaven, preached a different gospel, um, let him be eternally condemned is somehow that is sometimes how that's translated. Right? This, this is serious. Right? Notice what Paul didn't say there. Right? He didn't say, if we are an angel from heaven, preach a different gospel. You know what? Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it too much. You know, at least they still believe Jesus is important for their life, right? No, that's not what he said. Or he didn't say, if we are an angel from heaven, preach a different gospel. You know what? That's okay. There are many different ways to understand the gospel. We each each have different interpretations, right? No. And he didn't say, if we are an angel from heaven, preach a different gospel. Just just take us aside. Have a word with us. Let's see if we can find some middle ground, because some common ground. No, that is not what Paul says. What did he say? He said, if we, and that includes Paul... (laughs) the apostle, or an angel from heaven. Notice how forceful that is. He didn't say a demon from hell, (laughs) right? If we or an angel from heaven preach a different gospel, let us be eternally condemned. In fact, it's so important, as you can see in verse 9, Paul says exactly the same thing again. Someone who preaches a different gospel, they're going to get in big trouble. Now, why is this so important? Because if you're not preaching the true gospel, if people are being led astray, that's of eternal consequence. Jesus in Matthew has a go at the Pharisees uh, in, in chapter 23, verse 15, for doing that very thing. He says, Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You travel over land and sea to win a single convert, and when he becomes one, you make him twice the child of hell you are. Why? Because they weren't teaching the right thing. See, the gospel is of primary importance in the life of the church. Paul charged Timothy, and you can read about it in the letters of Timothy, to guard the good deposit given to him, the apostolic gospel. Because There will come a time, says Paul to Timothy, when people will be led astray by different Gospels. He says that they'll they'll turn to what their itching ears want to hear. But the Bible is clear. There's no getting around this. Another Gospel is not another Gospel. It is no Gospel at all. And sadly, this is still a problem today. And we must be on guard. Examples, you know, some some churches may teach that you are saved because you are able in your own strength to somehow surrender your life to Christ. And then in your own faith, you know, you kind of partner with God and live live for him. That's not the gospel. The gospel is the gospel of grace and grace alone. Not because of anything you have done, but all because of what God has done for you in Jesus. Now, some churches teach that it doesn't really matter what you believe, as long as you're just a good person. That's not the gospel. That's not good news. That's good advice. (laughs) The gospel is good news, something that has happened for you or to you. And it's the good news about the risen Jesus, about his life, his death, and his resurrection, about real events that happened in real history to save you. Some churches teach that if you truly believe in Jesus, then he will heal you of your sickness and bless you with financial prosperity. That's not the gospel. That is not the gospel of hope, ultimate hope in Christ. That is not the gospel that teaches we must take up our cross and follow Christ. Because he went through hell for us. That is not the gospel. That is not the gospel that promises that no matter what, when you go through the valley of the shadow of death, the Lord is with you. 
Now, some churches teach that you need to believe um, and you need to conform. Right? That if you don't tick all the moral and spiritual boxes uh, that the church has set out, then you are not saved. That's not the gospel of faith in Christ alone. That's, the, that's the, another gospel that preaches that somehow I can add to my salvation. That is not the gospel. So the question is, how can we know that we are hearing or teaching the right gospel? Well, it's quite simple, really. Paul says, if you hear another gospel, one that is not the same one as we preached to you. In other words, uh, the, the other gospels uh, are out there because they have twisted the word or they've left something out from the word or they've added to the word of God or they've gone completely off the map. Right? And that's led to them preaching another gospel. In other words, how do we know that we're preaching the right gospel? You measure it against the word of God. What does the Bible teach? And what does the Bible teach? That Jesus came and he lived the life we failed to live in perfect obedience to his Father. And then he died the death we deserve to die. He took the punishment for our sin. And then he rose victorious from the grave, defeating sin and death, so that we can follow him into eternal life. And he sits at the right hand of God the Father in heaven, overseeing the unfolding of history. And he will one day come again and bring to completion the new heavens and the new earth so that we will rise to new life with him, in him, and be with him forever. There you go. And when you trust in Jesus alone, when you put your faith in him, not in your own efforts, not in your own ability to live a moral life, right? because it's good news, not good advice, then you're believing in the true gospel. And that is wonderful. It is glorious news about God's amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind. But now I see. Let's defend that gospel. Let's protect that gospel. Let's be on guard for that gospel. And let's preach that gospel. Let's pray. Lord God, thank you for Jesus, our King and our Saviour, who came and lived and died and rose again for us. Help us to guard the good deposit of the gospel. Help us as, as uh, followers of Christ and as churches to preach uh, the true gospel, the biblical gospel, the gospel that Paul preached to the churches so long ago and that has been preached throughout the centuries, the gospel that speaks of your grace through Christ alone. And Lord, we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, hope you have a good day.